All right, problem 83, we have the function f is differentiable and has the values shown in this table. And both f and f prime are strictly increasing on the interval from zero to five. And it's asking for which of the following could be the value of f prime of three. Okay, so since it's saying it's strictly increasing, that essentially just means that um, it's, it's, um, it's always increasing. I guess, I mean, um, like how about, let me, opposed to, you know, if it just said increasing, um, like as, it could be increasing as long as the end value is more than the beginning value, but that doesn't mean that um, it doesn't, that it doesn't get lower somewhere in between. But since it says, since it's saying strictly increasing, that means it's always like the derivative is always positive is another way to think of it. It's always positive in that interval. Now, um, that being said, um, since, um, since, you know, the derivative is also increasing, that means that any slope you find between two points has to get larger and larger. So if you find a slope between here and here, that slope has the at least the, or the slope, the, the next slope has to be that value or more. And then the next slope has to be that value or more. So like, it just like, it, the, these, these slopes have to get larger. It doesn't say about how much, it doesn't have to be it's by a certain amount, it just has to be more than the previous slope. So if we wanna find the derivative at three, we, get, we can get an estimate of around like what's going on before three and after three. So, um. What you can do is find the slope between 2.8 and 3, and find it between 3 and 3.1, and then compare them, and then look for the number that's uh, more than the one on the left and less than the one on the right. Um, and that's why you can see these, these values are pretty close to each other because they're trying to see if you can if you can pick that idea up. So let's just do some comparing. So um, let's if it's from 2.8 to 3. Um, it's going to be changing by, well, let's find, let's just, let's just do the math. Um, 2.8 to 3, the slope, just use slope, just use slope formula. So I don't want to, again, I don't want to send too much tedious work. So slope change in X, 3 minus 2.8. And on top change in Y, 45 minus 39.2. That will leave you with 5.8 on top over 0.2. And off the top of my head, you know, I'm trust, I don't trust myself, but let's, let's use the tree line on my calculator. 5.8 divided by 0.2. So you get 29. So slope here is 29. So it can't be 29 because it has to be more than 29 as you get larger, as X gets larger. So you know it can't be 29, none of these. So is it 30 or 35? So let's see what it is from three to 3.1. Let's see what the slope is. So you again, find the difference in X under the difference in Y, difference in Y on top, 48.05 minus 45. And you get a 3.05 over 0.1. And that's 30.5. If I'm doing my mental math. Yeah, see, that's 30. The slope then there is 30.5. So at 30, it has to be between 29 and 30.5. So the only number that makes sense is, or I'm sorry, at three, the value, the slope has to be between 29 and 30.5. The only number that makes sense is 30. So the answer is D. Number 84, the graph of f prime, the derivative of the function f is shown above. On which of the following intervals is f decreasing? Okay, so um, this is the graph of f prime. So when we're looking for when it's decreasing, you literally just have to find where it's um, negative. Don't get confused by like where it's going down. 
just you only care about where it's negative because anytime it's negative that tells you f is decreasing because remember this this is the, this is f prime and f is decreasing anytime the derivative is negative so it's decreasing on this interval because the it's incre it's decreasing from zero to two because the derivative is negative and then decreasing from four to six because the derivative is negative there too. And so our answer will then be E. That's all there is to it, don't overthink it. All right, 85, my favorite type of problems. But I know some students uh, struggle with this, but struggle with these, but once you get, get it, it's actually not too bad. Um, so you're trying to find the volume of the, um, I mean, I, I don't know, I can't, of this, I guess, I don't know what you would call this, but um, this, um, I guess this is a loudspeaker. And so the loudspeaker, you know, has, you know, the base is, is bounded by these two equations from the one to four. And the cross sections are perpendicular to the x axis. The cross sections are for these, you can think of these, these vertical lines. So think of this vertical line as a cross section, and the cross sections are squares. So, like, you, an equ the equation of a square, you know, is, you know, is, you know, the side length squared. Because it's square, a yeah, square. So uh, let me just pick one of these at random. So let's say that red is that base. So you want to basically find the equation for to represent the base of this. And think of this as the center, like over here. So the distance from here to here is x squared plus 10. And distance from here to here is negative x squared plus 10. Now again, that's just this is a, this is just uh, functions in terms of this graph. But we really you really just care about actual length. Length just is always a positive value. So you can either just double, double, um, double this function two times x squared over ten. That'll give you the total length. Or you can technically add them. You can do the side length equals x squared over ten plus negative x squared over ten, and you still get two times x squared over 10. So this is your side length. And so the area is just this squared. It's just 2 over 10 times x squared squared. Or it's just going to be 1 fifth squared to 1 25th times x to the fourth. So that's the area of a that will give you each of the cross sections. To find the total volume, which is what you want to find, you integrate the you integrate this function from zero to four. And for that, we have our calculator. So we go to our calculus function, find the numerical integral. Zero to, whoops, not that. Zero to four of and we get eight point one nine two. What that is wrong. Hmm. What did I do wrong? Eight point one nine two. Oh, this, so this is um, this is a good example. You got you got to pay attention to detail. I so I integrated from zero to four, not. One to four. So let me just so good thing there was an answer close to that, but I can tell you the answer is going to be D. 
but let me just fix that just to prove it to you. So it should be one to four. That is not one to four. X to the fourth divided by 25. And there you go. There's that answer. And so the answer is D. All right, so I hope that explanation helps.